National League North review for October, let's get into it. So coming into October, Scunthorpe lead the way, three points clear of second place Chester. Curzon, Charlie, Alfreton, Leamington and Scarborough make up the rest of the playoffs. At the bottom of the table, Radcliffe are yet to win a game on four points, with Oxford, Marine and Rushall just above them in the relegation zone. So let's start on Saturday the 5th of October with Oxford City, who just sacked manager Sam Cox after only one win in his first nine games. His replacement is Ross Jenkins, who had left Oxford in May to take charge at Boreham Wood, only to be sacked himself after just eight games into the season. So Jenkins returns to Oxford City after only three months away, and his first game was away to top of the table, Scunthorpe, who took only five minutes to take the lead through the very talented Callum Roberts. But despite being top, Scunthorpe had a bit of a shaky September themselves, with a defeat against Scarborough, a draw against Warrington, they need a replay to beat Newcastle Town in the FA Cup, then lost in the next round to Geisley, so it wasn't a huge surprise when Corey Andrews equalised for Oxford 18 minutes in. But thankfully for Scunthorpe, they've got one of the best attackers in the league right now in Callum Callum Roberts, whose free kick puts Scunthorpe 2-1 up. But from then on, manager Andy Butler brought Callum Roberts off in favour of going more defensive to try and see the game out, but as Scunthorpe sat deeper and deeper, they only seemed to invite Oxford onto them, and in the 94th minute, Josh Parker floats the ball across to Aaron Drew, who snatches a late equaliser, to give Oxford City a very good point in Ross Jenkins' first league game back. So with Scunthorpe dropping points, a win for third place Curzon away at Buxton would close the gap at the top to just one point, and in a recent interview, Adam Barton said they'd been encouraging midfielder Luke Griffiths to get into the box more rather than sitting deep and that advice paid off here as it was Luke Griffiths on the edge of the box who put Curzon 1-0 up. After a promising start to the season for Buxton a terrible run of form has seen them drop down into 16th and frustrations boiled over in this game when Finder Lapp was given a straight red for a dreadful tackle on Isaac Buckley Ricketts. The game finished 1-0 which puts Curzon up into second. Now on to 6th versus 7th as newly promoted Leamington were looking to continue their superb start to the season but they came up against the Scarborough side who when they are on it they can play some superb passing football and 55 minutes in, they work the ball into the penalty area. Alex Wiles shot his block, but the rebound was finished off by Luca Colville to put Scarborough 1 0 up. But Leamington have got the best home record in the division and they defended well, looks a threat going forwards. And 65 minutes in, Jack Edwards headers the ball to George Ward, who scores a super overhead kick to give Leamington the equaliser. The game could have gone either way, with both sides guilty of missing chances, and the two sides who were level on points coming into the game couldn't be separated on the day. Now, on to Kingsland versus Darlington, the win for either of these sides would see them jump up into a playoff position and over the summer Darlow signed 19 year old striker Jack Mascol who'd scored 26 goals for Dunstan FC last season but he has struggled making the step up so it should do his confidence the world of good to get a goal to put Darlow 1-0 up. And whilst Darlington have struggled with injuries to key players they've been relying on their solid defence to help pick up the points keeping six clean sheets in a row but unfortunately for Darlington it was defensive errors that cost them in this game. The first was a result of trying to play out from the back then the second goal was another mix up when Toby Leash tried to head the ball back to Jameson, but Ross Crane was there to intercept and put the ball into the open goal. A 2-1 win for Kingsland, which puts them up into sixth. 20th place Needham Market have found goals hard to come by this season, scoring only five goals in their first 10 games, so it's quite a surprise to see them go 2-0 up inside 33 minutes at home to South Shields, thanks to two goals from centre-back Kieran Morphew. Before the game, Needham Market signed the experienced Reggie Lamb, who's made 65 appearances in the MLS and 226 appearances in League 2, and he could potentially prove to be a good sign as he rounded the keeper to score in his debut and give Needham Market a massive 3-0 win to move away from the drop zone. It was a must-win game at the bottom of the table, with 22nd place Marine at home to 24th place Radcliffe, and it was Radcliffe who had the better of the chances early on in this one, but 35 minutes in, Adam Thomas manages to prevent the ball from going out, and Christy Montgomery, with a lovely controlled volley, puts Marine 1-0 up. And in the second half, Radcliffe struggled to create anything of note as Marine defended brilliantly and really should have won this game by more than one goal with the amount of chances they created. But a big three points for Marine and Radcliffe are still looking for their first win of the season. So after match day 10, Curzon's win puts them up into second, just one point behind leader Scunthorpe. A draw for Scarborough sees them drop out of the playoffs and a leapfrog by Kingsley into sixth. Radcliffe remain bottom whilst Oxford, Marine and Rushall make up the rest of the relegation zone. Now on to Saturday the 12th of October where we only had four games played and let's start with Charlie who had the chance to move up into second if they could beat Needham Market and 35 minutes in a Craig Hewitt free kick puts the Magpies 1-0 up. But Charlie are missing their two strikers in Cole Hall and Jack Sampson and as they struggle to find the second 
second goal, Needham Market started to threaten going forward with Tev Allen's flick hitting the post and somehow staying out. Then in the 94th minute, Jack Dye headers the ball to the back post and Nico Valentine gets on the end of it but hits the post at point blank range and Charlie made hard work of this one but a 1-0 win puts them up into second. After a decent start to the season for Hereford, it's been four games without a goal but 18 minutes in, that goal drought was put to an end as Akeem Rose scores on his second attempt to put Hereford 1-0 up away at Buxton. But eight minutes later, Buxton got a very controversial equaliser as Connor Kirby's header looked to have been saved by goalkeeper Aaron Chapman, but the line will put the flag up to signal that the ball had crossed the line. From the replay, you can clearly see that the ball hits the post, rebounds off Chapman and doesn't cross the line, but the goal stands and the game is 1-1. Buxton played some decent football at times, but they're really struggling to create and never really looked like scoring. Then in the 93rd minute, the Hereford keeper punts a long ball forward, which was flicked on by Cissé, and substitute Andy Williams finished brilliantly to give Hereford for the late winner and after four games of our win these three points puts Hereford back on track and up into fourth. Now on to 17th place Southport who have to be one of the most inconsistent teams in the National League North. Ever since Jim Bentley has taken over they've been a very streaky team where they'll look brilliant for five games then the next five games they look hopeless but they got an impressive 3-0 win against South Shields with Southport sitting back and picking them off on the counter and it was a surprise to see Southport get a clean sheet considering they came into this game with a bit of a makeshift back line. Both Sam Minihan and Jordan Keane were out missing, then Tom Moore came off injured, so with three main defenders missing, I wasn't expecting them to look as well organised as they were, but that was helped by a South Shield side who, without last season's top scorer Paul Blackett who's out injured, they're struggling to put the ball in the net, but a big win for Southport who climb up into 10th. Let's move on to bottom of the table, Radcliffe who are still looking for their first win in the league, but things were looking good for them at home to Warrington when 38 minutes in, Tunde Olalabi scored in his home debut to put Radcliffe 1-0 up. But just six minutes later, Radcliffe were down to 10 men when Jordan Hume was sent off for something. I'm not quite sure what the referee saw, but he was sent off and they were down to 10. Up until that point, Radcliffe were in control of this game, but the red card seemed to derail them. And in the 58th minute, Warrington made a double substitution with both Josh Amos and Josh Miles coming on. And in the 70th minute, it was Josh Miles with a great strike to level up the game at 1-1. Then just four minutes later, Warrington were on the attack again. Connor Woods gets the ball on the right-hand side. He beats his man, crosses the ball into the box where Warrington's other substitution substitute Josh Amos was unmarked to tap the ball in. A massive win for Warrington and the search for Radcliffe's first win of the season still goes on. So after those four games, Chorley move into second and Hereford climb into fourth. The win for Southport moves them into the top half of the table into tenth. Radcliffe remain bottom, six points away from safety and both Buxton and South Shield sit in 18th and 17th. Now on to Saturday the 19th of October where we had a full fixture list and let's start with a big game at the top as it was third versus fourth, Curzon at home to Hereford and Curzon's squad is already looking strong this season but it was given a boost with the return of Isaac Sinclair to the side and it took him only six minutes to make an impact as his strike put Curzon one nil up. Hereford have got the best away form in the league and it's their away wins that are the reason they find themselves so high up in the table after some shaky performances at home. And in the 43rd minute, Tate Campbell's deflected strike levelled the game Then just after half-time, Matt Preston, who came in for the suspended Sammy Robinson, won the game for Hereford with a great header. A huge 2-1 win for Hereford, which puts them up into second, just one point behind Scunthorpe. A win for Charlie against Alfredton would have taken them to the top of the table, but an 89th minute winner from Liam Waldock was enough to give Alfredton the 1-0 win. It's 14 matches unbeaten for Alfreton, 5 clean sheets in a row and they look very solid at the back with centre-backs Max Hunt being the standout performer and this win takes them up into 4th. The one to Kidderman's 2 got back to winning ways with a much needed 3-0 win away at Needham Market. Now Kiddy made a flying start to the season but 5 games without a win has seen them drop down into 11th. Injuries to key players like Amari Morgan-Smith, Ben Beresford, Paul Downing, Alex Penny and Luke Summerfield has not helped and those injuries have highlighted the lack of depth that the squad has but this was a much much better performance from them. They controlled the game and should have won by more, really. But this win puts them back on track and moves them up into ninth. As for Needham Market, this defeat sees them fall back into the relegation zone. South Shields put an end to their poor run of form with a 1 0 win against 8th place Leamington. And for the first 30 minutes or so, Shields really did play some superb stuff. But the main issue for them has been conceding too many goals. But with centre back Dylan Morse back in the side, the defence looked a lot stronger with him, Broad, Brent, and Briggs at the back. But a much improved performance that takes South Shields 
Shields up into 13th. It was a big game at the bottom as Peterborough Sports were at home to Marine, and Marine had more than enough chances to take the lead, but only four goals from their first 11 league games tells you that putting the ball in the back of the net is a big problem for them, and you feel a better and a more clinical team would have punished Peterborough, but Marine got the chance to take the lead from the spot when Matt Tootle handled the ball, but Finn Sinclair put his penalty wide as their woes in front of goal continue. Peterborough were lucky not to be behind, but the penalty miss seemed to give them a lift, and in the 72nd minute, Dan Jarvis rolled the ball past Matt Corran to put them 1-0 up. Then in the 91st minute, Dion Semby Ferris secured the three points to move Peterborough four points above safety and keep Marine in the relegation zone. It took 11 games, but Radcliffe finally got their first win of the season with a 1-0 win away at Brackley through new signing Tunde Owalabi, but the main thing in this game was that Radcliffe were defensively very solid. They've been shipping goals for fun this season, but getting Rick Smith and Ollie Thornley back together in defence has seen them look a lot more solid. Despite the win, they're still bottom of the table, but let's see if they can build on this. So after those games, Scunthorpe lead the way at the top, closely followed by Hereford and Charlie. Defeat for Curzon puts them down into fifth, but the league is still very tight as you'd expect. At the bottom, defeat for Needham Market sees them drop into the relegation zone, as they are overtaken by Rush Hall Olympic, who managed to get a point away at Darlington. Radcliffe's first win of the season puts them onto seven points, and closes the gap to safety to just three points. Now on to Tuesday the 22nd of October, and let's start with top of the table, Scunthorpe, who ended their four-game winless run with a 3-0 victory over Rush Hall Olympic, and this was a miles better performance than what they've been offering up recently. Striker Sam Fishburne came into the start in 11 and was given a chance up front, and he impressed with his hold-up play. The wing-backs Denton and Barrows were actually allowed to get forward in this game and offer some width in the attack, which is something Scunthorpe have been missing these last few games, and Callum Roberts was once again unplayable, and his mazy dribble for the third sealed the win. A much more encouraging performance from Scunthorpe, who stayed top. Second place, Hereford were looking to keep up their unbeaten away record at Warrington, but 22 minutes in, Connor Wood's free kick came off the underside of the bar, but was headed in by Evan Gums, who's usually a centre-back, but he played in defensive midfield for this game and was outstanding. Hereford made one change for this game with Sammy Robinson coming back into the team after serving his suspension, but he'll be serving another suspension as his late tackle was given a straight red card to make this an uphill battle for Hereford. But to be fair to Hereford, they continued to create chances and came close on numerous occasions, but the equaliser just won wouldn't come, and with being down to 10 they were always going to be stretched, and Warrington picked them off and put the game out of reach through Josh Amos. It's 7 points in 4 games for Warrington since the return of manager Paul Carden, and this win puts them up into 14th. So if Hereford failing to win it was Charlie who took full advantage and moved up into 2nd with a 3-0 win at home to Darlington, Now over the summer Charlie lost their 3 top scorers with Justin Johnson moving to Macclesfield, Carlton moving to Scunthorpe and Jack Hazelhurst moving to Burton, which was 39 goals lost, but despite losing all that attack talent, Charlie are still the league's top scorers so far this season and look a superb side. Striker Mamadou Torre has struggled since coming in from Warrington Rylands but he scored twice in this one and it's not just his goals in this game but his link up play and his touch was so good and let's see if he can start to kick on but things are looking very good for Charlie as they move up into second just one point behind Scunthorpe. Buxton have lost seven of the last eight games and have been on a terrible run of form, but a superb strike in the 14th minute from Ethan Fitzhugh gave them the lead away at 7th place Chester. And this was a poor Chester performance, and they really missed the presence of Jack Bainbridge in midfield, who's probably been Chester's player of the season so far, and without him in the midfield, they looked far too lightweight, but in the 77th minute, Chester had the chance to equalise from the spot, and Kurt Willoughby stepped up but smashed it against the post as the game stays at 1-0. Chester huffed and puffed, but it's now five games without a win for them, as their promising start to the season looks to be fading. Benny Moore made it six games unbeaten and a move up into the playoffs with a 1-0 win away to Alfreton, but it was a bizarre goal for them to win the game as the ball loops up into the air, then lands on the head of the defender and into the net. From then on, Spenny Moore were resolute and hung on for a huge result as Alfreton's 14-game unbeaten run comes to an end. Now on to 6th place Kingsley who travelled away to Oxford City and it's Ross Jenkins third game in charge of Oxford since returning and his main focus has been to try and shore up a defence that's conceded the most goals in the league but 15 minutes in Kingsley were given a gift when Jalen Jones passed the ball into the back of the net and it was more mistakes at the back for Oxford as the defender stopped assuming the ball was running out of play but Finley Barnes kept the ball alive allowing Josh and Amy to finish and put Kingsley 2 nil up. Oxford did pull a goal back through Corey Andrews, but a Sam Walker header ensured a 3-1 win for Kingsland, who move up into fourth, and they're doing all this without top scorer from last season, Johnny Magretz, who's still out with an injury. So after those results, Scunthorpe remained top one point ahead of Charlie, who are in second. Curzon, Kingsland, Hereford, Alfreton and Spenny Moore make up the rest of the playoffs. At the bottom, back-to-back -back wins for Radcliffe sees them climb out of the relegation zone, and Rush Hall Olympics defeat sees them fall into the drop zone instead. 
Now on to Saturday the 26th of October and we'll start with top of the table Scunthorpe who travelled away to 11th place Southport and it was a very comfortable first half for Scunny who were dominating the game and took the lead through an excellent Callum Roberts free kick. But when Scunthorpe were in control just before half time out of nowhere Evans plays a dreadful back pass, him and Nicholson then run into each other and Danny Lloyd finishes well to make the game 1-1 with Southport's first chance of the game. A common complaint about Scunthorpe this season has been that they are too defensive and too negative but in this game they created plenty and got themselves back in front 55 minutes in through Danny Whitehall. But once again it was more defensive errors at the back as Brad Nicholson fails to cut out the ball forward and Sonny Hilton finishes brilliantly to bring the game back level at 2-2. Then just three minutes later it was Coogan's turn to drop a clanger as he gives the ball away to Carver who plays through Danny Lloyd to turn the game around and make it 3-2. And after that Scunthorpe just didn't seem to carry the same threat going forwards. They had played reasonably well up until that point but defensive errors in this one cost them big time but a brilliant three points for Southport who move up into eighth. Now on to Curzon who moved up into second with a superb 4-0 win against the Chester side who are on a poor run of form at the moment. Expectations were high at the start of the season, the squad and the summer recruitment appeared to look good on paper and it looked like a squad capable of challenging at the top but in reality they're creating nothing going forwards the one part of the team that has been working and has looked solid is the defence but in this game they were just filled with basic errors and Chester are a side that like to pass the ball and try to control the game but Curzon were aggressive, got in their faces didn't give them time on the ball and Chester didn't have an answer for it. And manager Callum McIntyre is under pressure now but the positive for him is that whilst they are down in 13th which is way below where they want to be they are only two points off the playoffs so a couple of good results could see him steady the ship and have them in the playoffs and turn things around but we'll have to wait and see. Kidderminster moved back into the playoffs with a 1-0 win away at 10-man Peterborough Sports. It was Amari Morgan-Smith with a tapping set up by Reese Devine who caused Peterborough all sorts of problems down the left hand side along with Ashley Hemmings but a much needed win for Phil Brown as Kiddy move up into 7th. On to 12th place Brackley who got a 1-0 win at home to South Shields. Now Brackley are looking very good defensively but it doesn't quite seem to be clicking for them up front. It took an excellent strike from their fullback to win them this game but they've got plenty of attacking talent up front and if they can get it to click I think they'll shoot up the table pretty quickly. Unfortunately there's no highlights for this one but Buxton was 6-1 up at home to Needham Market at half time. The game finished 7-1 in the end as Needham Market sit bottom of the table. Darlington are in a bit of a slump at the moment with only one win in their last six but they were in complete control of the first half at home to Warrington with Andrew Nelson putting them in front. It's been a huge boost to the side to get Cedric main back fit as he's vital to this Darlington attack but I've watched this goal back several times and I can't tell if it's a superb volley or a headed own goal by Murphy Bennett but either way it put Darlington soon a lot. In the second half Warrington had to improve and they brought on skipper Josh Amis and he found himself in acres of space to pull a goal back for Warrington. And the attacking trio of Connor Woods, McDonald and Amis was causing Darlow all sorts of problems. In the 83rd minute Amis unleashed a superb strike and he changed the game for Warrington in the second half coming off the bench. The game finished 2-2 which leaves Darlington in 18th and Warrington in 16th. Alfreton left it very late to beat Rush Hall Olympic with an 88th minute goal from substitute Jake Day and a 91st minute goal from Lewis Salmon and even even though Rush Hall are on a bad run of form at the moment and find themselves in the relegation zone, they really didn't play that bad in this one and were unlucky to lose. They've got two talented wingers in Dempsey Arlott, John and Terrell Pennant, and when they get them on the ball running at defences, they do look dangerous. So the signs that Rush Hall can improve, but this win keeps Alfreton in the playoffs in sixth position. So at the end of that match day, with Scunthorpe's loss, they drop down into third and Charlie lead the way in first. But while Scunthorpe and Curzon do have a game in hand over them, Kidderminster's win puts them up into the last playoff spot in seventh. At the bottom, Radcliffe, Rushall, Marine and Needham Market are all level on 10 points, but all sit in the relegation zone. Now for the final match day of the video, at the time of editing this, I don't have any highlights to show you, but there was four games played on Tuesday the 29th of October, and I'll just run through the results and we'll see what it means for the table. Scunthorpe regained top spot with a thumping 6-0 victory over Farsley Celtic, and in next month's review we'll talk about the mess that Farsley find themselves in off the field. A 2-1 win for Kings Lynn away to Spenny Moore puts them up into second. A 2-0 win for Southport against against Rushall moves them up into 6th and Buxton with a 2-0 win against Radcliffe makes it 3 wins on the spin for Buxton who move up into 9th. So that is the review done with and I'll be back at the end of November to review more National League North action.